we're about to sneak into Michael Grinder's training room. He's a pioneer when it comes to nonverbal communication. Let's listen as he shares some of his secrets. I asked you before if you are parents, I'm not going to ask again, different question. How many people are parents with teenagers? Now that, this is where we go bless you. Because if you understand dog and cat, and you understand eye contact, and you want to have a discussion with a teenager about cleaning their room, that's <laughs> insane. That's insane. You're going to sit down and make eye contact? I need you to make... Folks, all teenagers have catness. If you want them to clean their room, you walk over to the room. Their door is closed. Slip a note under. Clean your room. Run as fast as you can. Get out of there. <laughs> Why would you stay there? Why? You want to talk to a cat? <laughs> now, as a grandpa, I did it wrong with my own kids. Now I'm doing it wrong with my grandkids. So you just have to forgive yourself. But do you have the pattern of what you're trying to do? You just have a goal that you're aiming for. And that's what I want to share with you tonight. You don't have to agree, but just have some more information so you can make a decision. As you do this, remember, same doctor, same patient. Don't debrief it. Do this. Now, here's what's nice. This is the part that you want. After you've done the two-point, thank you for coming. Look at the x-ray. This is where the x is. Ah, this is so cool. Now you're going to do two and three. And you're going to say, and what we're going to do about it is. Watch. What we're going to do about it is, and you have your palm down. You go to your cat about the disease, but you go to your dog about the person. <laughs> and once you get there, you go, okay, I'm making life too hard. I love it at the Portland airport. I, just above California. We have the best airport police I've ever seen, among other things. They know how to communicate really, really well. And let me explain. They wear gloves. <laughs> Smart. Smart. But this is the traffic, here's the pedestrians. They never look at the pedestrians. They just expect you to notice their hand. Pretend I have another glove on. It's in them. If you really do step off that curb, they will go like this. And you go, oh, sorry. <laughs> but they don't look at you the whole time. You save the look. You save the look. Now it makes more sense. We've got to be better with our nonverbals. We're getting better at sports. I'm a referee. In the past, a referee would look right at you. Now they just give you the card. But they don't look right at you. Why? Because that gets the adrenaline flowing. Here's your teenager. You've already said, go make your room. And you continue going like this. Go make your room. That's a fight. That's a fight. Teenagers, expletive said, now you're no longer talking about making your room. You need to respect me in this house. You're, you're no longer doing the room. We're doing morality now. Who started that fight? Why? Because you made too much eye contact. After you've done it once, you've said it, you have to go like this. That is so hard to do because you want to go. <laughs> now you're back to John Wayne. <laughs> what are your goal? If your goal is for them to make the room, this is tough. This is tough. You have to let them have the last word. Oh, that's so hard. Because later you're going to tell them they shouldn't have said that last word. But not now. If you want them to make the room, then do it the right way. But don't use it as a morality play in front of the rest of the household. Because some of the siblings are going, hey, this is good. Watch mom and dad with the kid. Don't be the live entertainment at home. <laughs> Don't be a living reality show. Understand eye contact, verbiage. Ooh. 
What a difference it makes. To raise children is huge. Example, you already raised your hand if you were a parent. You have a baby. The baby is born. You wish the baby a good, good life. But how do you wish it? If they are a dog, you say as a parent, I just want my children to be happy, happy, happy. But if you have and you birth a cat, happiness is not a big value to a cat. Honest, being happy is not what they want. So what is your wish for a cat? By the way, when they're this small, you don't know if they're a dog or a cat. For a cat, what you wish is, I hope you live in interesting times. That's what a cat wants. They like variables, changes, the future. That's why most dogs are going like this. The future it keeps changing. All the cats go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're waiting for the latest invention. But it's so different for everyone. Mm -hmm.